Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. My name is Jared Palmer, and I'm the VP of AI at Vercel. I joined Vercel about two years ago after they acquired my build system startup Turbo Repo. Many of you might also know me from my React community contributions, like Formic or TSDX. Thank you. Um, <laughs> once I joined Vercel, I, I led the Turbo Repo team for a bit, uh, and then all of our frameworks division that's like Next and Svelte and React and our internal DevTools teams. Uh, but earlier this year, I transitioned, I got AI pilled, and I transitioned full time to lead our AI efforts. Uh, today, I want to talk about building generative user interfaces with Next.js and um, basically what my team has been working on for the, the past few months. We've been, we just recently launched a product called V0, and it generates code for UIs from just natural language prompts. And let's see if we can watch a video of how this works. So as you can see, you type in a prompt, and it streams React code with Tailwind, Shad, CNUI, and your favorite tools that you probably all use. You can click and reprompt, and it will augment the interface on demand, make it black and white. And when you're done, you can go over in a second and just copy the code and paste it into your app. And so the idea with V0 is it's not to be pixel perfect. That wasn't the goal. The goal is to get you, as the name implies, to your first version and get you to the point where you can just copy, paste, and ship. In, this re in the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk to you about how we built V0 with Vercel's AI stack and how you can use these tools to build your own AI native products. Not a surprise, V0 is built with Next.js. It's built with server components and actions and middleware and edge functions, and it's backed by Vercel KV. What's cool is that our work on V0 has helped the Next.js team dog food new features, many of which were uh, announced today. Using Next.js and Vercel allowed us to take adv advantage of a streaming-enabled architecture something that was initially designed for fast-loading e-commerce and SaaS websites, turned out to be absolutely perfect for streaming these long-lived AI responses, just like the ones used in V0. So as you saw in the keynote, um, if we didn't have um, a streaming and tried to build a traditional maybe blocking UI like we see over here, our users would basically find themselves twiddling their thumbs, waiting seconds, 10, 15, 30 seconds, waiting for a response. Gross. <laughs> um, but streaming UIs solve this problem by displaying parts of the response incrementally, like you'd see over here. And this is exactly the same technique we use in V0 and popularized by ChatGPT. But building this isn't very easy. It's quite a bit of boilerplate streaming stuff. If you ever worked with streams, it's not so fun. Um, plus, different AI model providers have different response payloads, and so it gets even more complicated. So we did something a couple months ago by introducing something called the AI SDK, which abstracts all this complexity for React, Svelte, Vue, and Solid, and gives you the UI hooks and helpers you need to add AI features natively into your applications in the fewest lines of code you could possibly imagine. And it works with Langchain and OpenAI and Anthropic and Hugbase and basically the rest of the AI stack that you're probably already using. But the AI SDK helps you finish the swing and build interfaces in your actual application, not just your Python notebooks. So you can see it in action in our model playground. If you go to sdk.vercel.ai, you can actually compare up to like 20 LLMs side by side, and you can see the streaming in action. So you can type a prompt, and here we're comparing GPT 3.5 to Meta, uh, so Meta's Llama model, and you can see both are gonna stream um, at various speeds, uh, but they stream back the response, and so there's an immediate interaction there. So once ready, with a, in the model playground, we can uh, click copy code and copy our code with the SDK that's ready to just put into our applications, whether that's Next.js app router, Svelte kit, et cetera. So let's look at this code. So this is a code submit from the AI SDK that gets generated, and it's really straightforward. First, you get these helpers called streaming text response and opening AI stream. We have a Next.js, uh, what we're looking at here is a Next.js route handler. Uh, an app directory, um, and you're going to take a, uh, 
it's going to receive a messages payload. You're going to send that to OpenAI and take the stream that's uh, given back to you, pass it this little converter function called OpenAI stream, and return this streaming text response. And that's how you get this streaming text effect. Again, if you use ChatGPT, what we, it's, it's, it's very familiar. And then on the client, we switch things up and we give you this, these helper utilities, use completion and use chat, depending on whether you want an instruction or chat-like UI. Either way, the APIs are very similar. You're gonna pass uh, the endpoint, in this case, is like the default is API chat, to the hook, and you get back your message list, input, handle change, handle submit, all the utilities that you need to wire up a chat, a chat app. And then let's just react here. We're going to um, render out those messages in a list, discriminate between what's from the user and what's from the AI, and render this string, or what feels like a string. So that's the, that code you just saw is basically the same code that we used in the playground. And we also took that code and we built a full featured example of ChatGPT that you can deploy to Vercel. You can interact with it at chat.vercel.ai. So why am I bringing this up? V0 is actually a fork of this application. So we really are using our, our sort of drinking our own champagne, um, so to speak. Um, so yeah, V0 started as a fork you can, and of, of this chat, chat app. Uh, and I'm very proud of the fact that we built this sort of stack of both um, libraries and applications that we were able to extend to go to market with the product. But again, it's a fork. Um, all of this is amazing, but it's not enough for generative interfaces, right? Text is pretty limited. I mean, if you ask ChatGPT or Claude a question, they respond in plain text, like MS-DOS, 1981. Um, so we knew we, we had to push further. And the problem we found ourselves wanting to solve can be boiled down to really a simple question, which is basically, what if ChatGPT could just respond with React components? That'd be pretty neat. But what would that look like? Well, we kind of have some examples of this already that we use every single day. Google search instant answers. You know those special sort of situations when you Google something and it's a different UI? And Facebook newsfeed are, are great examples of similarly generative interfaces that we, wanna, uh, that we wanted to draw inspiration from. So in order to, to build V0, my team realized we were going to need some sort of rendering system like this. And so the naive approach would be, I don't know, using MDX or something like that to maybe prompt the language model to render it. But all of these, but, but that, all these sort of suffer from a bunch of different issues. Um, one, like you have to load all the components up on the client and that's just not gonna work. That's not gonna scale. I mean, imagine you're in SPA land and if Google was an SPA, for example, and you had to load the Chuck Norris component, the calculator component, the, the F1 schedule component, when all you really wanna do is translate, we are so back into Spanish. It's not gonna work, not gonna make it. So we're at Next.js Conf, so we're very server pill here. So the solution is to lift things to the server. And that's what we did. So Next.js and the Vercel SDK have re-entered the chat, uh, and server components and actions are the solution. So the key unlock was to bug the Next.js team to get server actions to return streams. Key unlock. And today I'm excited to announce that we're gonna update the AI SDK, which was previously built with SWR, to actually take advantage of server actions. This is gonna allow developers to create scalable, rich, streaming, AI-native component-based interfaces. So let's look at how this, this works and upgrade our little chat bot that we were just looking at to render React. So you'll see the directive here. We've changed that uh, route handler into an action. Uh, and now it's just a function, and it's gonna take messages as an argument, and we're gonna pass that to our AI. In this case, it's, chat, uh, it's open AI. Uh, we're gonna have that same stream conversion, and then this is the key part down here, experimental streaming React response, uh, which is brand new. And all you do is render a React component, and we're bringing back the render function, which I find you know, very, very, very fun. And you can do whatever you want. In this case, it's just font bold, but uh, you can use and combine this with OpenAI functions and actually let the language model uh, decide what component you might want to render. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's gonna be amazing for agents and other types of interactive applications. It's very exciting. 
So then on the, cl on the client side of the world, um, instead of passing the URL to use chat, you pass the action. And instead of rendering message.content, you're gonna render message.ui. And this is gonna act kind of like children, but it's the, gonna be the React component that, you, the, uh, that you're going to have responded to, uh, with from the LLM. So again, to put this in perspective, what can you do with this? So what we're saying here is now, you can, when somebody asks, when's the next F1 race, it's not just gonna respond with text. You can decide to render F1 schedule component. And that component can use all the tools um, that Next.js gives you. It can use suspense. It can use React server components. It can use, it's just JavaScript. So you can actually just render it in place. Truly interactive, full fidelity, it's React. So with Next.js 14, we finally have the foundation upon which we can build this next iteration of human computer interaction and user interfaces. So going back to V0 and watching this again, you can sort of see this in action. So we have the prompt, and we're streaming React code. So in response to that prompt, the action was triggered, but unlike what we just saw previously, one of the big differences between V0 and what we just showed was instead of picking from a finite set of pre-made components, V0 is sort of the next evolutionary step. It uses AI itself to construct the React components on the fly, uh, just in time before streaming it back to the user. So the end result with V0 is fully generative on-demand user interfaces with infinite possibilities without compromising on performance or bundle size, which we just discussed. But today we're open sourcing the underpinnings of that, and I'm very excited. So as I mentioned, we're, uh, we're launching the support for RSC in the Vercel AI SDK today, and we're gonna continue iterating on this. So I hope this talk has basically shown you that Next.js 14 is a great place to be and lays the foundation for the next wave of generative user interfaces, which in my opinion starts today. So to get started, all you need to do is NPM IAI. Uh, just follow the bill there are billboards all around San Francisco. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, it's funny. I, uh, I look at the download stats of this, and I'm like, oh, it's, it's really taking off. And then I'm like, wait, it has billboards. <laughs> so we're cheating. But anyway, uh, so to get started, just NPM install AI and go. And I hope today uh, that we showed you sort of the first look or the first, a, a, a first glimpse of what the future holds. Um, and the future is with, sorry, and um, <clears throat> the future starts with React and Next.js 14. So thank you very much, and uh, yeah, happy, happy coding. <laughs>